reading from the book of Exodus. The tent, which was called the meeting tent, Moses used to pitch at some distance away outside the camp. Anyone who wished to consult the Lord would go to this meeting tent outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, the people would all rise and stand at the entrance of their own tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses entered the tent, a column of cloud would come down and stand at its entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. On seeing the column of clouds stand at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and worship at the entrance of their own tents. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one man speaks to another. Moses would then return to the camp, but his young assistant Joshua, son of Nun, would not move out of the tent. Moses stood there with the Lord and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, the merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity, continuing his kindness for a thousand generations and forgiving wickedness and crime and sin, yet not declaring the guilty guiltless, but punishing children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation for their father's wickedness. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, I will find favor with you, O Lord. Do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as yours. So Moses stayed there with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights without eating any food or drinking any water. And he wrote on the tablets the word of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, but nor does he require us according to our crimes. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, July 27th, and once again, Gospel is Matthew. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went to the house. The disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my, 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 what a severe gospel this is. It is Jesus reminding everyone, live a righteous life. Do good. Do good in the world. Make the world a better place. And I think 99% of people do that. But there are still plenty of mischievous people 
and downright evil, nasty people who think only of themselves. People for whom the world is all about me and everyone else is of no consequence. And uh, they, they do run that risk of, um, of you know, I, I don't know and I can't say, um, you know, what heaven and hell are actually like, but I know which one I'd rather be in. And I think we all do. So I would prefer to live that righteous life myself. And that's what Jesus is saying. There are, there are those who make the world better and there are those who make it irrevocably worse irrevocably. Some people do harm that lasts and lingers for ages and generations. So think about that, my friends. How righteous is your life? How just? How fair? How loving? How much of an embrace do you extend to others who need you in terms of the giftedness that God has given you and wishes you to share with other people? Take care, my friends. Be good. Embrace others. Live that righteous life. Take care. And now, my friends, as we have shared the Word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection. <laughs> 